not software guys, they are hardware guys, they do a perfect job in hardware, but they don't normally make the software themselves. So there are some software houses making the software for them. Right? That's what they call tier two stamp in, in the terminology of the car companies. So you have companies making software and put that into a box and then the box goes into the car. So there's two different ways of solving that the problem on that ability. One very well, probably the best known way of doing this is to say, well, make sure that all the boxes we buy have the same software. Then the likelihood that those boxes talk to, to each other in a nice way is, is very high. Right? And you, more important than that, that it works well, you know who to blame in this world. That's extremely important for industry, knowing who to blame. So you just ask one supplier to make software for all the boxes and then you do it. There's a slight problem there in, the, in that business model, is that the guys making the boxes says, yeah, but if you put our software in, it's much cheaper. So if you want to buy one for that software in, hey, that's more expensive, now we get no money, right? And we work together with a Chinese car company uh, based in Sweden, which is not so rich and also <laughs> going very, very badly. Uh, and they couldn't afford to actually get into that market strategy. They couldn't afford to say, we depend on one company and the price would go up and the boxes would be more expensive. So they said to us, when we were here and we were doing this testing, said, well, there must be some other way of doing it. Can't you just, can you not ensure that the software is compatible? Right? How do you normally ensure that the software is compatible? Well, you define a standard. And that's, of course, what the car companies did. So in order to get compatibility, you have a standard type. When you buy your printer, right? You just connect it to your home network and everything works, and every computer can print, that's because it's based on the standard. And when you buy your router, all your computers talk to the router, you have no installation problems whatsoever. You put the router there, all your computers work immediately with that router. That's standard. So you standardize and problem solve. And that's what it is. And then the next question then becomes, okay, this is a nice standard, this standard we look at is called AutoSAR. It's a European standard, I would say, because it's mostly used in European in Europe, but also Ford and Toyota, etc., are part of that standardization body. And they all together define what the software in the car should look like. And the only thing you then have to do is say, does the software conform to the standard? Because we know that if the software conforms to the standard, then it will work. So, that's fine. And this is a much more tractable question for us, because that, that we probably could solve. I mean, the other one saying that is the software compatible in the, in the different ECUs you need the ECUs to get that's hardware, we don't want to get into this, but hey, this is this is a nice problem. So software performance. Anyone knows how to do that? Well, in the industry they know perfectly well how to do that. It's very simple. You test. You test for performance. And how do you test? Testing is called outsourced. <coughs> you outsource that to India and then everything is solved. So that's what they did. This consortium has some money, there's a lot of car companies involved. They said, let's just buy a few hours from the in India, they are cheap anyway. So we did for 30 plus person years and it's made some test cases. And then but this test suite will be used as the conformance test suite. And everyone has to run that test suite and then we know it's conformed. Took a bit more time than I expected actually, but hey, it's a difficult standard. It's actually one of those really good standards. As far as I've seen, it's still full of bugs in that sense and ambiguities, etc. But much, much better than most standards I've seen in the telecom industry. So it's kind of a good standard, not the one with that. But nevertheless, it was a complete disaster. Such a disaster that after putting all this money in there, which probably is not much for car companies, but much for me, after that they said, well, we don't use those test cases. It's, it's not good for us. So they, they let have 30 men here put in making the test case, then they just throw them away. And one could wonder, why is that? Why didn't that work? It's not because the Indians didn't write the test case, but I will try to explain why they did not work. <laughs> so, outsource is a standard defined by a consortium. And as in any standard defined by a consortium, everyone there wants to have certain things in it. For political reasons, for technical reasons, or for completely irrelevant reasons. But they want to have their stuff in there. So the result of this standard is that it's completely configurable. There are thousands, really, of parameters you can specify. Right? So 
specify by parameters, and then, then you get to your actual software. Of course, they standardize the parameters, and they standardize the, the process of, of the, how you put the parameters in there and all that stuff, but it is still very broad. You can do a lot in that standard. So in order to make software for a car, it looks like as this. So start on the left hand side, no, left -hand side here, with a so-called system template. That's what the car company says, oh, we are going to put those 63 boxes in the car. And from there they say, well, that, then therefore we need those messages on the count bus, count is one of the protocols, and those on the factory bus, and those messages on the lift bus, etc. So they make a big model of the car, you could say, but they don't want to, to specify the details. Then someone comes in with a configuration tool, and from this big picture of how the car should look like, they take the relevant bits here, and they make an XML configuration, which is 60,000 lines of code or something like that, a small XML file. Because XML is always more bulky than it should be. And then you do from there, you do your code generation, and this is what the vendors do then, and they create an library, a C library, a lib file, and some header files, and they ship that to, to the ECU builder, and they put that in, in, in the box. So important to note is that you have to do this configuration tool thing always because the standard says you may add some vendor specific things in the XML code. And in order to get the code generation work, you better do put some vendor specific things in the XML code. Right? So whenever you want to do this, you have to have a configuration tool as well. That's good for the, for the vendors because they, they can sell a combination of code generation tool and configuration tool together to make it come again. But that's awesome. So what is a test? A test then is both the configuration and the set of API calls to do in that situation that configuration. So you can't just say the test is well, you do this and this and this. It's saying do this and this and this in the context of this configuration. And that's important to realize. So if you then have to design a test, what do you do? You're not going to write 60,000 bytes of XML code. Because then the task has to be big. So you say, let's take a small configuration and a number, small number of API sequences per configuration. Because that's doable. You, you wouldn't be able to do this enormous amount of configuration for every test case. You have to do it small. But then you are smart, of course, because you take a small configuration in this configuration, that's a tricky test case. So that's 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 that. And the next configuration, that, that should be tested. The problem with that is that then, of course, if you ship those test cases, the vendors have to change the configuration slightly to make the code generation work. So they still have to do some manual stuff to get the code generation working. They're actually companies in how to make that process as well. So there was, there's some work that, that, that will be done with that purpose. So let's do a little bit of mathematics. What, what can you possibly expect from someone in India to do in a week time? Well, probably you can come up with two configurations and say three test cases or four test cases around such configurations. In a week, I would not be able to do that. But hey, in India they're very effective, they work with a lot of So this would probably be possible in one week. And I think it is possible because if you look at what they produce per week, then it's about <laughs> with 30 people. That's about what they can do. There's probably a lot of copy and pasting in it as well. But this is what you produce in one week. And then you multiply that by 50, and yeah, not that much of a day, in India. And you get about what they produce in 30 many. So you get this as, as a vendor that has to test the software. You are told by any brand, BMW or Volkswagen or whatever, that okay, you implemented the software, show us that those test cases are actually running for your software. Ah, you say. Then we have to make all these configurations, adapt the configuration, run those tests, adapt that configuration, run those tests, etc. That will take a little time. We will be back to you in a few weeks, right? So then that's really a lot of work to just run those test cases. But that's not the, the worst case. The worst case is that you actually have to find out for those test cases that do not actually conform to the So there are test cases that fail, but it's not a big problem that they fail because your vendor doesn't use that feature in that configuration. And they're not interested in that. In order to, to give your, your car company the best performance, you have to take that out. So that's the real nightmare in, in all of this. So this is the traditional testing approach, right? You write, you 
do some kind of module testing. Each module is tested separately because then you can make small configurations. Uh, you have a minimal configuration to support your tests, and then a few test cases around. Which means that you basically test one or two features at a time. We take a different approach. So this is now the approach we do with QuickCheck. So we said, well, if we want to test this, then we, we do it slightly different. We would do it as follows. We would make we use QuickCheck of course as the, the motor behind all this testing, and we use models for, in this case, a complete component. What the can stand or whatever. We get an XML configuration from, from the company and we said, okay, this is what you want. Okay, we generate our tests automatically from that configuration. So we are not depending on the configuration, that the tests that we generate with which are already for the configuration. We still have to send this configuration to the vendor, which has to create code first and then has to give us the code we test again. And then we run thousands of tests. Uh, different tests for that configuration. And one of the things which is new, and they could have done as well in manual testing, is we make one big configuration, a really large one, with lots and lots and lots of features in it, such that the vendor only once has to make a code. But we make such a tricky configuration that it actually costs a lot of possible scenarios, which both the vendors and we like a lot because we don't have to supply lots of different. Uh, and we can easily switch the configuration and test will automatically test the configurations. So we test more scenarios and we test more features together, I would say. <coughs> so in this model-based testing approach, we test uh, the complete clusters. Trust we have one configuration to support all that. We run huge numbers of tests and all the features are tested at the same time. And then of course we use this nice C stuff to, to automatically talk to the C code. We have to create C stuffs on the fly because there's a lot of, in the standards you can say which C functions you use for a specific event. So the, the, the names of the C functions are not set, they are configurable. So you don't know when you write your configuration, well we put to see the names in there, but in principle you can put any name for, for a function like right? set an emergency signal, that could be any name. <coughs> So we have to know from the configuration which name to use in order to, to, uh, to test it. So, okay, so we, we did this in, in a small scale first and then, and then we stopped the came to us and said, can you do this large scale as well? Let's give it a try. We want to make a new car now and we want to have this test very well. So we give you three clusters. Uh, these are the three ones, one is the communication stuff, the other one protocol stacks. We have the implementations for those from vendors that we trust. They have tested this software already, but can't you just use those well-tested things to make models and show us that, that this is actually plausible and in particular how much time is this going to take? And we give you a few months. Okay, fine. So what we then did is we started creating the models and run them against the three different vendors. And one thing that, that the car company was really interested in is if we had deviations in the, uh, from the different vendors. If the different vendors did things in different ways, because they were all classified as being well proper implementations. And of course we did. And we had then a discussion with the with the vendors and sometimes it was the workers are oh, that's stupid we had working in. And sometimes they said, yeah, of course we don't follow the standard, the standard stupid. You can't do this. Well, one example is, for example, would they, they all did not do it. If, if you stop, yeah, if you stop talking in the car, if you, if you kind of switch it off or whatever, they said, well, you, you shut down the communication and then you can start communication again. It's kind of a restart communication. I'm not sure where to choose exactly, but, but you can stop the communication and restart the communication. And when restarting the communication, you have a choice. Are you you remember what you were sending when you stopped it, so all the buffers are still there and you just send out the messages. Or you clear all the messages and say, okay, we, we just forget what we were sending. And in the standard says, oh no, no, you can stop and restart the communication and you should send out all the things you had been sending out before. But no one's doing that because it's very annoying if you stop the car and you start again and the car thinks you're still running on the autobahn from a front now, right? That's not what you want. So you don't follow the 
standard. But no one really put the effort and changed the standard because hey, we all know this is nonsense, so why would we do it? We find that kind of things and then we adapt the model and the standard accordingly. Okay. We wrote 500 pages of, well, every, every such document is about 500 pages of specification. Typical PDF files, you can download them from the internet if you're interested to look how they look like. And such 500 page document results in about 1500 to 2000 lines of airline code in the integration model. If you compare that to the C testing code, where you've written your, C, your tests in C, that will be about 50,000 lines. So we, we gain a factor of 10 in writing a model instead of testing. But I know this because the tests were su supplied by the vendors as well. So we know what tests they have run, and it's about 50,000 lines. It took us, for one such component, about 12 weeks to, to make one component. We did three components in parallel, about 12 weeks to, to make such a component, which is fast. And then we found all kinds of errors <coughs> in the code because of our way of testing. So even though this is very well tested software, we found things because we mix all the features together in this big configuration. And we could do that because we have a model and we can test things together. At the same time. All the assertions are always there, is this kind of how we call it. Because you would, normally in a test you would only write assertions of things you expect to fail. But if you have a model, you have almost all assertions at the same time, which is very powerful. So we found failures in the obvious fault free implementations. Uh, there was one implementation which basically said do nothing as a comment. And indeed you should not do anything there. Nevertheless, it was wrong to do nothing there because the coding style was such that if you do nothing, you fall through, and there's always a return value and a return something. So, returning something was not do nothing in that case. All that kind of stuff you can find because you're much more mature in testing. So, all that kind of things we, we found. Let's give you a quick book uh, of the things we find which were not found in traditional testing. CAL is a communication protocol. Uh, think of it as IP communication, you have memory space, 11 bits, or an extended count in 29 bits. So, old version 11 bits was not enough because you only have 2,000 messages, or type of messages, they needed more messages, let's extend that. Um, so, what happens then is that, for example, if you have a break system which is newer, you would support extended count systems. And then you can still have the same IDs for the messages, so you could have an extended can ID of 130, but that is a higher priority than of a normal standard ID of 140, because the lower the number, the higher priority. So if you want to have a high priority message, you give it the lower number, right to right. <coughs> So you, when you have too many messages, you buffer the messages, and the highest priority message should be sent first. That's the whole idea of the part. It's all real time, and then you want some messages to go a bit faster, like the breaks off. Typical, more important. So in this implementation then, you, in the C code, you have 32 bits in which you store the ID, and in order to, to remember was it a standard can ID or an extended can ID, you switch this one on for the extended can ID. And you already guess what goes on, right? We send a message, ID number 12, then number 130, number 40, some buffering has to happen. You can only send one message at the same time, so you buffer those two, and then you do a confirmation, and then what you see is that you send them to 12, and then number 14. So you, you do not send them to 30, although they are high priority. Why was that? Well, when they compared the IDs, they didn't clear this bit, and then they have really big numbers there. Right? So this means in the car that when you have a new brake system, old stereo, and you're sitting around in the stereo, <laughs> Then, you know, the steering has to go on. <laughs> Another thing we found this is, and this is also purely true, this is from idiocy of the quick set test. If you stop a group of communication, so you can, you can bundle system events in groups and you can stop a group. If you stop a group, then the communication for that group should not continue, right? You stop only that group and other groups can still continue. And then we had this nice test case, which is hard to read. You do something in group 10, and you, you put something in, and then you stop group 1, which wasn't even started, because then you stop it. And then you do the right thing. And nothing happens, nothing is set. All the group 10 stuff should still have gone through. But in the middle, you stop group 1. And it's a completely unrelated group. No one in the right mind wants a test case saying, oh, let's stop group 1, 
in the middle of something with root type 1. That's just because Kerchik Puler puts it in there. And even if you put it in this or that or that or that position, it wouldn't have helped. But if you put it in that position, just before you do the raw signals, then something happens. Well, the effect is that you stop all the groups at the same time. Because they didn't only clear that bit, they cleared the whole part. So that kind of errors are typically overseen in traditional testing. You find them easily by using Kerchik. So to conclude, or get to an end, what we did is we modeled the standard. And of course, if we model the standard, we make the same mistakes as when we would implement the standard. And since we don't know anything of car industry and auto software, we make even more mistakes than any other person would do. But that's not really a problem in our approach, because we have the implementation of three vendors, which we test against. And we always trust them to be correct, and we are the ones that are wrong. It gets interesting when they all three do something different, or at least one of them does something different than the other. Then we definitely have something interesting to tell about the compatibility between the different vendors. So it's not that we are so great in knowing how to solve, we can do the standard much better than they do. No, no, we follow what they do, but we actually detect inconsistencies between them. So we, we created models for three clusters. At the moment, we have been working on many more clusters. They said, oh, if you can do that, you can probably do the rest of the car as well. So we work on that. We also, uh, the flexibility is in this configuration. They can give us any configuration we can start testing. So we don't only do this for one car company. We'll, in the future, be able to do it for many car companies. They just have different configurations without much effort from our side or we have to push a button. Uh, and we outperform, we absolutely outperform the traditional testing in both finding the number of errors and effectiveness and total efficiency because of the technology test work. We're now partnering up with the standardization company in, in Sweden which stands for all electrical uh, devices and all the other things in order to achieve this, that your console will be approved by SP whenever the software is correct.
standard and the real security. Although all of them have made it second. There's an excellent chance somewhere in there. Yeah, yeah, we made it second. 